Okay, so we have the Integra Quest 24L 2020 with the Mercedes Sprinter chassis 2019. That's the newest uh, upgraded chassis from Mercedes Sprinter. And we're going to show you today the upgrades and things that we did to the outside of this unit. We have a separate video on the inside that you can view as well. So on the outside, we'll start over here with just some things that we learned about the unit. Um, under the passenger seat, right down here by the floorboard, I took the panel off, and there you are, one of those 2,000-ton hydraulic um, jacks, which is kind of cool because I used to always have to buy those, and I used to store them for safety purposes of having to use them down the road, but this one actually had one hidden under the seat. Okay, let's move over to the batteries. Um, of course, the 24L comes with, as most of them do, two 12-volt um, batteries, and we upgraded to 4 by 6 volt AGM batteries, which are maintenance-free, you don't have to check the water, and just so much easier. And because they all four would not fit in the steps, as you can see, the only the two 12 volt would fit in there, um, we had to use uh, the side compartment. Over here you'll see the uh, heavy duty wire that we use, the cables, um, that's going to our inverter, which is unfortunately 13 feet away from the batteries in this model. It's near the bed where the inverter is, and the further you are with an inverter to your batteries, the thicker the wires you need. So these are four aught wires cables uh, to allow more efficiency with uh, the power going to the inverter. And of course we have the cables going to the solar on top of the roof. But here's the cabinet that we have the second set of 6 volt batteries, the AGM. We use Interstate for now. And again the thick uh, wiring that you will see there, uh, the 4 aught, and it's all uh, connected. They also drilled a hole in the bottom of the cabinet you see back there in the back corner. I did put a screen over it just because of vermin, so I don't want it to get in there, but that's for ventilation. Um, I have not put a support system under that cabinet, which I'm thinking I'm going to do just because they are very heavy batteries. Um, but maybe down the road we may do lithium or something that's much lighter. Underneath, you'll see here are all the wirings and the different things that are going on. Those were all exposed. They were all exposed to the elements. And so I got the sheaths. They call it the, the plastic sheaths that you can uh, encapsulate all your wiring to protect them. Um, I'll have all these links below so you can see what we used, um, but definitely being preventative on that. This is the propane tank. It's a 12-gallon uh, propane tank. Um, we always, uh, right here, have a keypad. Um, we have a hidden key. We attached it to the propane tank here. Um, it's just screwed on with a bolt, and then we hid the bolt with some um, a plug so that you do, couldn't tell that that was a bolt there. Um, but that's just so in case we're ever out hiking or, or whatever and we can't find the key or we need to get back into the unit. It's more of an emergency. It's just for the door. That's it. Um, also, you'll see I'll cover the ladder later, but that's uh, one of those extendable ladders that you can buy for it's about 200 bucks. Um, we also have the WeBoost. I have another video just on this, but we have the WeBoost that we recently got. Um, that we're just holding on with a Techno RV suction cup and then a pole, an aluminum pole that I found and the cable is hidden up underneath this cabinet here that when we do put it on the side of the unit we pull the cable out and then we hook it to the top where the uh, cable connects and it's more of a temporary setup just so one, we can see if we like it and then two, that we don't have to drill any holes at this point and plus we can move it around so that works out really well there. Um, we're going to go up the ladder now and I'm going to show you the solar system. We have three uh, panels up here. I'll get a really good view here. 190 watt Go Power panels that we bought, three of them. So um, we have 570 watts of solar. 
Um, kind of went higher than we've ever gone before, but we do a lot of dry camping. So, you know, again, all this is connected um, through our system to the batteries down below. And so we can pretty much be off grid with power uh, without any problems because we also have the propane generator that's on board too. But to be honest with you, we never use the generator. Uh, the solar alone um, totally provides enough power that we need for everything um, in the, uh, the motor home. Now we'll go to the opposite side here. Um, one of the first things we added was a sewer hose carrier. Uh, it's five feet long and it's extendable to different lengths. Um, I use straps and existing holes underneath. Um, I'll be able to put those links on for you. Um, the other thing that we have uh, in the water area is the, I really like this hose. It's a flexible hose that it just makes it so much easier to store and use. Um, those have worked out really well. I haven't had any leaks or anything like that. Um, also, you'll see um, up there where the city water connection is, I have a brass L shape. Um, connector that is super handy without bending the hoses. So over here you'll see two cabinets, one opened uh, not as high and the other one all the way open. I actually changed out the hinge on this one to the right. I kept hitting my head every time I was trying to put the uh, barbecue grill in there. It's kind of heavy and awkward. I mean obviously you have to be careful with the slide out but I changed the hinge. I found the one that works and I'll have that link below for you. But this is awesome. I no longer have to bend over and, and try to maneuver that inside there. So it's worked out really well. It's uh, one of those hydraulic gas um, uh, spring hinges um, and you just have to be careful on which uh, side and the way that you put it on. Here's what it used to look like. That was the original one. For the propane um, generator, I don't need one. But yeah, this has worked out awesome. I really like that uh, this opens up a lot higher now. Just got to be careful of that slide out, that's all. The next thing we added was the TST tire monitoring system. I did a lot of research on these. I don't advise or didn't get a lot of good reviews on the flow through one, so we got the regular ones. Um, but these work out awesome. I mean, your system will most likely tell you if you have a low tire, but this is something that gives you peace of mind as you're driving. You can monitor the tires constantly um, and be at, e be at peace that you know that you're in good shape uh, while you're going down the road. I'll have a separate video on that whole system, but that was well worth it. Here's just a picture of the ladder collapsed, so I'll have that link below as well. Well, that was just a quick overview of our overall exterior. Again, we do have a whole video um, on interior, which is, I think, quite impressive and gotten a lot of good feedback on, so check that out. Um, we'll be having some more things coming up with uh, the Mercedes Sprinter itself, the fuse boxes, and all the learnings that you might want to have in your back pocket as you hit the road. Thanks again. Really appreciate it, and do check out our other videos. Have a great one, and happy camping.